Kumusta mga video kong tagapakinig? Nagbabalik ang inyong paaralang panghimpapawid Aral Tarlac Henyo Sa RTV Tarlac Channel 26 At sa bayang naririnig sa DZPC 828 Radyo Pilipino Tarlac Ayulin ay napapanood sa FB Live ng RTV Tarlac Channel 26 Sumasa himpapawid mula sa bayan ng Pura Tarlac Mula sa bayan ng San Clemente Mula rito sa Borok Elementary School, Pura Tarlac. Sa bayan ng Kapas Tarlac. Ako, ang inyong guro. Na maghahatid sa inyo ng makabuluhang pagtalakay sa ating aralim. sa ating Project Shine Aral Tarlacenyo ng STO Tarlac Province na kasalukuyang napapanood dito sa RTV Tarlac Channel 26 at Converge Cable 100 at sa bayang napapakinggan sa 8 to 8 AM DZTC Radio Pilipino Tarlac Magandang buhay, mabuting tao. Kamusta kayo mga giliw kong tagapakinig? Ang aking pagbati at paghanga sa inyong pagpapahalaga sa edukasyon at pagpupursiging matapos ito ng nagtatagumpay sa kabila ng hamon ng pandemya. Ako ang inyong guro sa edukasyon sa pagpapakatao, baitang lima, Ginang Jesli R. Bautista, sumasahim papawid mula dito sa bayan ng Victoria. Sasamahan at gagabay ka sa most essential learning competency na nakikisa ng may kasiyahan sa mga programa ng pamahalaan na may kaugnayan sa pagpapanatili na kapayapaan at paggalang sa karapatang pantak. Bago tayo magsimula, nais ko munang magbalik tanaw sa ating aralin noong nakaraang linggo. Inyong natutuhan sa inyong dating aralin ang mga programa ng pamahalaan na nagpapakita ng pagmamalasakit sa kapaligiran. Naaalala niyo pa ba ang mga programang ito? Kung ganon, magtala o maglista ng limang programa ng pamahalaan na nangangalaga sa kapaligiran. Maaari niyo isulat ang inyong sagot sa papel at maaari niyo rin i-comment ang inyong mga sagot sa ating chat box. Paalala lamang mga anak na gamitin ng tama ang ating comment section. Oras na upang i-check ang inyong ginawa at narito ang mga maaari sagot. Ang mga programa ng pamahalaan na nangangalaga sa kapaligiran ay Clean Air Act Brigada Eskwela Solid Waste Management Plant a Tree to Save Lives Run for Pasig River Pwede rin na May Pera sa Basura Ordinansa ng Bayan o barangkay na nagbabawal sa pagsunog ng basura. Ordinansa na nagtatag ng Materials Recovery Facility o MRF. Tapat ko, linis ko. At Earth Hour. 
Tandaan mga anak na kailangang maging responsable sa pangangalaga sa kapaligiran. Makiisa sa mga proyektong ito at gumawa ng mga simpleng bagay, ngunit malaki ang maitutulong sa pangangalaga ng ating kapaligiran. Ngayon ay simulan na natin ang panibago nating aral. Alam ko handang-handa na kayo, kaya umupo ng maayos at makinig mabuti. Nakikiisa ka ba sa mga programa ng pamahalaan na may kaugnayan sa pagpapanatili ng kapayapaan at paggalang sa karapatang pantao? Ano-ano ang mga programa ng pamahalaan na nangangalaga sa karapatang pantao? Yan ang mga pag-uusapan natin ngayong umaga. Nakikinig ka ba ng balita sa radyo o sa TV? Kung ang sagot mo ay oo, mainam kung ganon. Kung hindi naman, mayroon akong inihandang ulat na may kaugnayan sa ating talakayan ngayong umat. Halika, basahin natin. Kampanya sa Kaligtasan at Kalinisan sa Barangay Kabulwan sa Tarlac, Pinatindi. Upang maiwasan ang paglaganap ng sakit, nagkaroon ng proyekto ang Barangay Kabulwan na sagot ko, tapat at paligid ng bahay ko. Ipinag-uutos sa lahat na panatilihing malinis hindi lamang ang tapat at paligid ng bahay, kundi pati ang loob na rin. Bukod sa kalinisan, pinaiting na rin ang seguridad sa barangay. Sapagkat marami na ang nananakawan dahil naging aktibo na naman ang akyat bahay gang. Nagtalaga ang barangay ng mga kagawad na magbabantay sa loob ng 24 oras. Sino mang makakita ng mga kahinahinalang tao ay dapat ipagbigay alam sa barangay. Dagdag pa rito, nagtalaga ang konseho ng barangay na inaprobahan ng mga miyembro, dapat sundin ang curfew na alas 10 ng gabi para sa mga kabataang labinwalong taong gulang pababa upang maiwasan ang kaguluhan sa kalsada. Ipinaalala ng kapitan ng barangay na si Domingo M. Gamido na magkampanya ang mga kabarangay niya upang mapanaganap ang kapayapaan at kaayusan ng barangay. Sagutin natin ang mga sumusulod na tanong ukol sa balita. Ano ang kampanya ng Barangay Kabulwan sa Tarla? Ang mga kampanya ng barangay ay Sagot ko, tapat at paligid ng bahay ko, pagpapaiting ng seguridad at pagpapatupad ng curfew. Ganyan din ba ang inyong sagot, mga anak? Very good kung ganoon. Pangalawang tanong, alin sa mga kampanyang ito ang nakakatulong sa pagpapanatili ng kapayapaan ng barangay? Ang tamang sagot ay pagpapaiting ng seguridad at pagpapatupad ng curfew. Alam kong ganyan rin ang inyong sagot. Mahusay! Para sa ikatlong katanungan, paano nakakatulong ang mga kampanyang ito sa pagpapanatili ng kapayapaan at kaisan ng barangay?
ang pagpapaiting ng suguridad sa pamamagitan ng mga kagawad 24 oras ay makatutulong upang maiwasan ang pagsalakay ng mga grupo ng magnanakaw na tinatawag na akyat bahay ga. Alam kong ganito rin ang iyong sagot. Very good. At para sa huling katanungan, ano ang nagbunsod sa pamunuan ng barangay na magpatupad ng curfew? Ang tamang sagot ay ang pagpapatupad ng curfew sa mga kabataang labinwalong taong kulang bababa mula alas 10 ng gabi ay makakatulong upang maiwasan ang kaguluhan sa kalsada. Nang sa gayon, ito ay isang paraan na rin upang maprotektahan ang mga kabataan sa gulo at krimen. Magkapareho ba tayo ng sagot? Mahusay mga bata! Mayroon din bang ganitong programa sa inyong barangay? Mabuti kung ganon. Ang mga nabanggit na programa kanina ay ilan lamang sa mga programa ng barangay o ng ating pamahalaan upang mapanatili ang kaayusan at kapayapaan. Kapag may kaayusan at kapayapaan, tiyak na napapangalagaan din ang karapatang pantao. Ngunit, ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin kapag sinabi nating karapatang pantao? Ang karapatang pantao ay mga prinsipyong gumagabay sa pananaw ng tao tungkol sa pagtrato ng kanyang kapwa at sa dignidad bilang tao. Nararapat lamang na matanggap o matamo ng bawat isa sa atin anuman ang kulay ng balat, kaiba man ang salita, mayaman man o mahirap. Sa madaling salita, ang karapatang pantao ay mga bagay na libre nating tinatamasa sa araw-araw. Papaisip na kayo. Ano-ano nga ba ang mga halimbawa ng mga karapatang pantao? Una na riyan, ang karapatang mabuhay. Ibig sabihin, may karapatang maisilang, magkaroon ng pangalan, at nasyonalidad. Alam ko, tinatamasa nyo yan, mga anak. Karapatang magkapamilya. May tahanan at pamilyang nag-aaruga ng tama. Ulitin ko ha, nag-aaruga ng tama. Susunod, karapatang manirahan sa payapa at tahimik na lugar. Karapatan sa pagkain. Ibig sabihin may sapat na pagkain at malusog na pangangatawan. At syempre, karapatang ipahayag ang sarili. Sa madaling sabi, dapat na, 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 na ipapahayag ang isip, pananaw, at damdamin sa iba. At ang pinakahuli, karapatang magkaroon ng proteksyon laban sa pang-aabuso panganib at karahasa. Ito ay ating mga karapatan na walang sino man ang dapat ng mahat lang na maranasan natin ang mga ito. Tinataba, tinatamasa nyo ba ang mga karapatan ito? Kung oo, ang inyong sabot ay maaari nyo pindutin ang like sign sa ibaba ng ating comment section. Kung ang mga, ang mga nabanggit na karapatan ay nilabag ni Numan, 
maari siyang managot sa batas. Kaya naman, may mga programa ang pamahalaan na nangangalaga sa karapatang pantao upang matiyak na ang bawat isa sa atin ay namumuhay ng may saya, kapanatagan at kapayapaan. Kaya't nararapat lamang na malaman natin ang mga hakbang na ginagawa ng ating pamahalaan upang mapangalagaan ang ating karapatang pantao. Ano-ano pa ang mga programa ng pamahalaan na nangangalaga sa karapatang pantao? Narito at isa-isahin natin. Una narito ay Bantay Bata 163. At ano naman ang programang ito? Ito ay may layuning protektahan at iligtas ang mga bata laban sa anumang uri ng pang-abuso, physical man, emosyonal, at maging sexual na pang-abuso. Kaya kung ikaw ay nakasaksi ng ganitong pang-abuso, tumawag ka, tumawag ka lamang sa 163 at maaari mo nang matulungan ang mga batang nakakaranas ng ganito karahasan. Susunod, Child Protection Policy. Ano ang Child Protection Policy? Ito ay isang polisiya na nagbibigay karapatan sa mga batang katulad mo na maproteksyonan mula sa pang-aabuso o hindi pagtanggap tulad ng diskriminasyon, pambubuli, at iba pa na maaaring mangyari sa tahanan man o sa paaralan. Kaya naman sa ating ahensya, ang Department of Education o DepEd ay nakikiisa at pinapahalagahan ang Child Protection Policy. Pangatlo, laban kontra sa droga. Ano naman ang layunin ng programang ito? Ito ay isang programa na pumupuksa sa paglaganap ng mga krimen sa bansa dahil sa droga o ipinagbabawal na gamot. Ang paggamit ng ipinagbabawal na gamot ay nakakapagdulot ng malaking kagulungan sa ating bansa. Kaguluhan tulad ng pagpatay, panggagahasa, pagnanakaw, at marami pang iba. Ngunit sa kabilang banda, ang mga taong sangkot dito ay binibigyan ng pagkakataon na maipagtanggol ang kanilang sarili bilang paggalang sa karapatang panta. Ibig sabihin, mananatili kang inusente hanggat hindi napapatunayan sa korte ang krimeng ipinarata o ipinaparatang sa iyo. Ngunit sa kabilang banda, kung ikaw ay napatunayang nagkasala, ay ito ay yung pagbabayaran sa pamamagitan ng pagkakakulong. Kaya kids, huwag gumamit ng droga upang hindi masira ang inyong kinabukasan. Panghuli, Human Rights Education. Katuwang ng Human Rights Commission, ano ba ang Human Rights Commission? Ito ay ahensya ng pamahalaan na nangangalaga sa mga karapatang pantao. Kaya't katuwang ng Human Rights Commission ang mga akademikong institusyon at mga civil society organization sa pagtataguyod ng mga programa para sa edukasyong pangkarapatang pantao, kagaya na Memorandum of Agreement on Human Rights Education, pag-develop ng mga education curriculum at teaching exemplars para sa mas epektibong pagtuturo ng karapatang pantao sa kabataan. Sa madaling sabi, ang Human Rights Education ay nagsusulong ng mga programa upang mas maunawaan ng nakararami ang kanilang karapatang pantao.
ang mga programang ito ay nagnanais na mapanatili ang kaayusan at kapayapaan sa lahat ng panig ng bansa. Ang paggalang sa karapatang pantao ay nagdudulot ng matiwasay na pamumuhay sa anmang pamayanan. Sa pakikiisang ito, nabubuo ang kasiyasiyang samahan at magandang relasyon na nagpapanatili ng pagkakaunawaan ng bawat isa. Tandaan ang mga programang nabanggit kanina sa acronym na B L C H B Bantay Bata 163 L Laban kontra sa droga C Child Protection Policy at H Human Rights Education Ayan mga anak, binabati ko kayo sapagkat inyong nabatid ang mga programa ng pamahalaan na nagpapanatili ng kapayapaan at paggalang sa karapatang pantao. Kung alam nating igalang ang karapatan ng ating kapwa, kapayapaan rin ang makakamit ng bawat isa. Makilahok at makibahagi sa mga gawaing nagpapanatili ng kapayapaan at kaayusan. Maaari mo itong simulan sa iyong sarili. Sabi nga sa isang awitin, Kulay man natin magkaiba, mundo natin ay iisa. Maghawak-hawak ng kamay, isigaw ng sabay-sabay kapayapaan. O di ba? Kaya naman, Ngayong tapos na ang ating leksyon, oras na upang tasahin at sukatin ang kaalaman at kabutihang natutuhan ninyo ngayong araw. Ako ay may inihandang maikling pagsusulit. Ang gagawin nyo lamang ay tukuyin ang ideya na inila, inilalarawan ng bawat bilang. Para sa unang bilang, Ito ay mga prinsipyong gumagabay sa pananaw ng tao tungkol sa pagtrato ng kanyang kapwa at mga bagay na dapat matamasa ng lahat. Sagot, karapatang pantak. Susunod na bilang, ito ay isang programa ng pamahalaan na pumupuksa sa paglaganap ng mga krimen, sanhi ng paggamit ng ipinagbabawal na gamot. Ano ito? Sagot, laban kontra sa droga. Ikatlong bilang, ito ay isang program na pinangungunahan ng Commission on Human Rights na kung saan pinapalaganap at pinapaunawa sa nakararami ang mga karapatang pantao. Sagot, Human Rights Education. Kaapat, ito ay may layo ng isuplong sa kanilang tanggapan ang anumang pang-aabuso na nasaksihan. Ang sagot, Bantay Bata 163. Huling bilang, dito nakapaloob ang mga pulisiya at mga karapatan ng mga bata upang maprotektahan sila sa tahanan man o sa paharalan. Ang sagot, Child Protection Policy. Binabati ko kayong lahat, mga anak, sapagkat natitiyak kong nakuha niyong lahat ang tamang sagot sa ating pagsusuk. Kaya naman, tanggapin niyo ang mga papuring magaling, mahusay, at mabuting tao. Tandaan na tayong lahat ay may karapatan at kalayaan. Ngunit kaakibat ng mga kalayaan ito ay ang pagiging responsable upang maiwasan ang di pagkakaunawaan. Samantala, ang mga programa ng pamahalaan sa pagpapanatili ng kapayapaan ay nangangailangan ng pakikiisa ng mga mamamayan. 
Mga anak, ako ay naghanda ng mga gawain at refleksyon sa inyong learning activity sheets. Inaasahan ko na ito ay inyong sasagutan ng buong sigasig at sa abot ng inyong makakay. Ngunit kung kayo ay nahirapan, huwag kayong mag-atubiling magtanong sa inyong guro na nasa inyong paral. Sabi nga nila, marunong ang nagtatanong. Kaya naman, panalangin ko na anumang higit lalo ang mga aral sa buhay na inyong natutuhan sa araw na ito ay inyong may sa buhay araw-araw. Muli, ako ang inyong guro sa edukasyon sa pagpapakatao, Baitang Lima, Ginang Chesley R. Bautista. Nagpapaalala na piliing maging mabuting tao sa lahat ng panahon at pagkakatao. Hanggang sa muli! you know that children learn more when they initiate an activity and are actively engaged in it? This is your science teacher broadcaster, Princess Diana L. Renquillo, for Aral Tarlacenyo. Let's learn science together on Aral Tarlacenyo. Catch us live every Monday to Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Watch Aral Tarlacenyo on RTV Tarla, Channel 26.00. Simulcast over Radio Pilipino, DZTC, 828 kilohertz, and streamed live on FB page and YouTube channel of RTV Terla, Channel 26. To Aral Terlakenyo here on RTV Terlak Channel 26 Simulcast over DZTC 828 AM Station Radio Filipino Terlak and Converge TV Channel 100 Broadcasting live here at Pura Terlak This is Natalie Don C. Laroya your teacher broadcaster for Science Grade 5 how are you today, kids? I am glad to know that you are doing great and that you are excited to learn new things despite the effects of the pandemic in our learning setup. I would like to invite you to join me in a scientific experience. Today, we are about to explore another lesson in third quarter in Science Grade 5. Are you ready to join me for today's lesson? Come on! I want you to prepare your modules in Science Grade 5. Also, kindly prepare your pen and notebook so that you may take down notes as we go along with our lesson. Do you have it now? Great! Make sure that you are in a comfortable place, far from noise, so that you can hear me clearly while listening to this broadcast. Today, we are going to talk about the conditions necessary to make a bulb light up. After this learning episode, you are expected to identify the components of a simple circuit and infer the conditions necessary to make a bulb light up. But before that, let us try to recall the concepts that you have learned last time about the interaction of light with different materials and the ability of a material to block, absorb, or transmit light to its use. 
now grade 5 pupils get your pen and paper and try to answer the following questions or for those who are watching via fb live you can type your answer in the comment section just write or type the letter of the correct answer number one which is the primary source of light is it a rainbow b sun or c flashlight i repeat which is the primary source of light letter a rainbow b sun or c flashlight let's check your answers the answer is letter b sun brilliant on earth the main source of natural light is the sun. The sun makes its light when atoms smash together inside it, releasing huge amounts of energy. It fires off the energy into space in all directions. Some of the radiation travels to Earth as the light and heat we know as sunlight. Let us have the next question. Which object reflects light? A. Plastic bottle B. Wooden chopping board Or letter C. Mirror Again, which object reflects light? Is it letter A. Plastic bottle B. Wooden chopping board Or letter C. Mirror And the answer is Letter C, mirror. Cool! When light rays hit a mirror, they are reflected perfectly. The reflected rays, therefore, meet at a point. And this phenomenon, which is called convergence, causes us to see reflected images when the light rays hit our eyes. Okay, let's move on to number three. Which object is a transparent material? A. Glass B. A piece of paper or C. Colored envelope I repeat, which object is a transparent material? Letter A. Glass B. A piece of paper or C. Colored envelope And the answer is Letter A. Glass. Awesome! Glass is a transparent material which means it lets light pass through it and allows us to have a clear view of the objects on the other side. Let us have the last number. Which color absorbs all the light? Letter A. Black B. White or C. Yellow I repeat, which color absorbs all the light? Is it letter A, black, letter B, white, or C, yellow? And the answer is letter A, black, visual spectrum, creating a void of light. As a result of absorbing all light wavelengths, Black is the hottest possible color. A black object is black because it's absorbing all the light. It is not reflecting any color. Okay kids, did you get a perfect score? Good job! Now, let us take a look at the picture. In the picture, we can see clock, television, cabinet, curtains or blinds, paintings, lights, sofa, lamp, and throw pillows. Again, in the picture, there are objects such as curtains or blinds, clock, television, cabinet, paintings, lights, sofa, lamp, and throw pillows. Now kids, I have a question for you. Which of these objects use electricity?
electricity. Can you name them? You can write on a piece of paper the objects that you found in the picture. Or if you are watching via FB Live, you can type the name of the objects in the comment section. Write or type as many as you can. You have 5 seconds to look for the objects that operate through electricity. Your time starts now! Let us now check your answers! The objects that operate through electricity are television, light, and lamp. I repeat, the objects that operate through electricity are television, light, and lamp. Now kids, I have another question. How does electricity flow to your appliances? Let us discover the answer together. Are you ready for scientific learning? Great! There are two conditions that must be met in order for electricity to flow. First, there must be a source of electricity. And second, there must be a complete path for the electricity to flow through. To further understand the flow of electricity to appliances, let us learn how to make a bulb light up through a simple circuit. A simple circuit is a closed loop of a conductor that electrons can travel around, usually consisting of a power source or a battery and an electrical component or device such as light bulb and conducting wire. Now, let us unlock some words that we need to familiarize ourselves with. In order to understand the conditions and other factors on how to make a bulb light up, let us discover the components or parts of a circuit through an activity. All you need to do is to fill in the blanks with the missing letters to form the needed word. I repeat, fill in the blanks with the missing letters to form the needed word. You can write the word on a piece of paper or you can type it in the comment section. Make sure to put number in your answers. A picture will be provided for you to easily guess the word. Are you ready for the challenge, scientific kids? Great! Let us have the first one. It is an object that uses electrical power or electrical energy. Again, it is an object that uses electrical power or electrical energy. Let me give you a clue. The first letter is B and the last letter is also letter B. What is the word, kids? Correct! The word is bulb. A light bulb is a device that produces light from electricity. Light bulbs turn the electricity to light by sending current through a thin wire called filament. The filament is usually made of tungsten, a material that emits light when electricity is passed through it. Let us now have the second one. It is the source of energy or electricity. I repeat, it is the source of energy or electricity. The word starts with B and ends with Y. Can you guess the word? The answer is battery. Good job! The role of a battery or cell in an electric circuit is to supply energy to the circuit by doing work upon the charge, to move it from the low energy terminal to the high energy terminal. Let us now have the next one. It is a cable or link 
that connects the source of energy to the bulb. I repeat, it is a cable or link that connects the source of energy to the bulb. Here is a clue. In the first word, the first letter is C and the last letter is G. While in the second word, the first letter is W and the last letter is E. The words are... Yes! Conducting wire. Cool! Wires provide a path through which current can flow from one end of a battery to the other. Wires are made from materials that carry or conduct electrons more easily than other materials. Let us have the last one. It is a controlling device that is used to open or close a circuit. Again, it is a controlling device that is used to open or close a circuit. The word starts with S and ends with H. The answer is switch. Superb! An electrical switch serves the purpose of controlling the flow of electrical current within a circuit. It can be used to both prevent the flow of the current or to initiate it. This is an example of a simple circuit consisting of the components that we have tackled such as switch, bulb, conducting wires, and cell or battery. Did you know kids that open circuit is an electric in which the continuity is broken so that the current does not flow? While a closed circuit, as you can see in the picture, is a circuit without interruption, providing a continuous path through which a current can flow. Let us now talk about the conditions necessary to make a bulb light up. For the bulb to light up, you must Number 1. Connect the first wire to the negative end of the battery. Number 2. Strip the ends of insulated wire and connect to the bulb. Number 3. Connect the second wire to the switch. And lastly, connect the third wire to the positive end of the battery. Okay kids, now that you learned how to make a bulb light up, it is now time for you to apply what you have learned about them through an activity. Are you ready for the challenge? Cool! Let's try! Here is the instruction. Match the concept in column B with its description in column A. Write or type the letter of the correct answer. Write the answer on a piece of paper or you can type your answer in the comment section. Don't forget to put number in your answers to avoid confusion. I repeat, match the concept in column B with its description in column A. Write or type the letter of the correct answer. Write the answer on a piece of paper or you can type your answer in the comment section. Don't forget to put number in your answers to avoid confusion. For column A, number 1, circuit where electricity can flow. Number 2, a complete path of electricity. Number 3, a source of energy. Number 4, circuit where electricity flows freely. And number 5, connects the light bulb and battery. Again, for column A, number 1, circuit where electricity can flow. Number 2, a complete path of electricity. Number 3, a source of energy. Number 4, circuit where electricity flows freely. And number 5, connects the light bulb and battery. 
For column B, letter A, battery. Letter B, circuit. Letter C, closed. Letter D, light bulb. Letter E, open. And letter F, wires. I repeat, for column B, letter A, battery. Letter B, circuit. Letter C, closed. Letter D, light bulb. Letter E, open. And letter F, wires. Okay, kids, let's check your answers. For number one, the answer is letter E. Excellent. Open circuit. For number two, the answer is letter B. Brilliant. Circuit. Number three, letter A. Awesome. Battery. Number four, letter C. Cool. Close. And number five, letter F. Fantastic. Wires. Again, here are the answers. For number one, letter E. Open circuit. Number two, letter B. Circuit. Number three, letter A. Battery. Number four, letter C. Close. And number five, letter F. Wires. Alright kids, now that you can identify the components of a simple circuit and the difference between a closed and open circuit, let us have our last activity to test what you have learned from today's lesson. Are you ready? Cool! Here is the instruction. Number the parts from 1 to 4 to show the sequence in making a bulb light up. Write the answer in your notebook or on a piece of paper. Or for those who are watching through FB Live, you can type your answers in the comments section. I repeat, number the parts from 1 to 4 to show the sequence in making a bulb light up. Okay kids, let us now check your answers. For number 1, battery. Number two, wire. Number three, light bulb. And number four, switch. Again, kids, these are the answers. For number one, battery. Number two, wire. Number three, light bulb. And number four, switch. Did you get everything right? Great! Okay, count the number of the correct items. For those who got a perfect score, excellent! For those who got 2 to 3, good job! For those who got 1 and below, still, good job for trying! Do not lose hope and keep on studying the lessons for you to get a high score. Okay kids! To wrap everything up that we have talked about in this lesson, let us take note of the following. Conditions necessary to make a bulb light up. Number one, connect the first wire to the negative end of the battery. Number two, strip the ends of insulated wire and connect to the bulb. Number three, Connect the second wire to the switch. And lastly, connect the third wire to the positive end of the battery. I repeat, the conditions necessary to make a bulb light up. Number one, connect the first wire to the negative end of the battery. Number two, strip the ends of insulated wire and connect to the bulb. Number three, connect the second wire to the switch. And lastly, connect the third wire to the positive end of the battery. 
Now, Scienterific Kids! I hope you learned a lot today. If you have queries about our lesson for today, just text me at my number 0966 7955484. Again, if you have queries about our lesson for today, just text me at my number 0966-7955484. This is Project Shine Adal Terlakenyo brought to you by the Department of Education, Division of Terlak Province in cooperation with DZTC 828 AM Station and RTV Turlock Channel 26 and Converge TV Channel 100. This is your science anchor teacher, Mom Natalie Don, wishing you a scientific day. Ba, na ang salitang yoyo at ang makabagong bersyon nito ay naimbento ng isang Pilipinong nagngangalang Pedro Flores? Taong 1920s nang dinala ni Flores ang laruang ito sa Estados Unidos. Sinimulan niya ang paggawa nito sa kanyang maliit na pabrika sa California at ipinakita sa mga tao ang iba't ibang tricks ng paggamit nito. Lam mo na! Yan ang yoyo! Multiply 1,089 by 9, you will get an answer, the exact reverse, which is 9,801. My name is J.R.P. Duldulao, your teacher broadcaster on Aral Tarlaqueño. For more math trivia and answers to your math questions, catch Aral Tarlaqueño every Monday to Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Learning math is so much fun! Morning, Grade 5 learners. Welcome to Aral Tarlac Henyo here on RTV Tarlac Channel 26 and Channel 100 of Converge Cable TV. Simulcast over DZTC, Radio Pilipino, Tarlac. Broadcasting live here from Herona, Tarlac. I am teacher Marife V. Hambaro your teacher broadcaster for mathematics grade 5 and i will be with you as we make the most out of our discussion today now let us check who are present today so we are with nathaniel louise capimpin from tolebo elementary school kate chloe gonzalez from Susuba Elementary School of Capas East District. We are also with Grazelda Ober Santos. Okay, good morning, my dear learners. But before we begin, make sure that you are in a comfortable and distraction-free environment so that you'll be more focused as you listen. Our topic for today is formulating the rule in finding the next term in a sequence. So please prepare your textbook 21st Century Mathlets 5, your notebook, and your pen to make sure that you won't miss out important details. You may also grab a snack and drink just in case you'll need it later. Hello again, my dear learners. Welcome to another 25 minute lesson of mathematics 5. at the end of our lesson you will be able to first define sequence and patterns second 
formulate the rule in finding the next term in a sequence. And last but not the least, use sequence and patterns in our daily life experiences. Please be reminded that you may ask questions at the comment section of our Facebook live streaming at RTV Tarlac Channel 26. We will give answers to your questions at the end of the lesson. But before that, let us play a game first and I call this game Tell Me What I Am. Let's find out if you still remember your lesson last Wednesday with Sir Jasper. In this game, all you need to do is tell me what I am. I will show you a picture and then you will identify it based on the descriptions. You have 5 seconds to answer each question. One correct answer is equivalent to one point. You may type your answer on the comment section of our Facebook live streaming at RTV channel 26. Are you ready? Griselda, Martina, Charles, Mar Enrico? Okay, let us start now with the first question. Tell me what I am, number one. I belong to the family of solid figures. I have six faces, 12 edges, and 8 vertices. I am a prism made up of two parallel bases that are polygons of equal areas. Tell me where I am. Okay, the correct answer is rectangular prism. You are correct. If you got it right, you have one point. But if not, let's try again in the second question. Tell me what I am, number two. I belong to the family of solid figures. I have two faces, no edge, and no vertex. I am also non-polyhedron. Now, Tell me what I am. Okay, the correct answer is cylinder. Very good. If you got it right, again, you have two points. But if not, let's try again in the third question. Tell me what I am, number three. I belong to the family of solid figures. I have no face, no edge, and no vertex. I am non-polyhedron. Now, tell me what I am. Time's up! The correct answer is, is fear. If you got it right, again, you have three points. And congratulations, you got the perfect score. Okay, thank you very much for participating and answering our question. Very good. Kate, Chloe, Andrea, Mar Enrico, Griselda. Yeah, okay. Very good. Andrea Linayao is correct also. Now, everyone did great. And I guess everyone is now ready for next lesson on page 250 of your textbook, which is all about sequence. Now, let us begin with the defin definition of pattern and sequence and other terms related to sequence for the better understanding of our lesson. Let us begin with the word sequence. Sequence is the list of items that follow a certain pattern. It is also an ordered set of numbers, letters, shapes, or symbols 
Each number, letter, shape, or symbol in the sequence is called a term. Patterns in mathematics can be geometric or numerical in nature. Take note that we have two types of pattern. The repeating pattern and the growth pattern. Repeating pattern in is defined as a pattern in which there is a discernible unit of repetition. Example, A, B, A, B, A, B. While growth pattern is defined as pattern that has discernible units commonly called terms. And each term in the pattern depends on the previous term and its position in the pattern. Example, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. Next is number sequence shows pattern if there is a common and specific rule being shown by the other order of the numbers. Skip counting is one skill you have learned which shows a certain pattern in a given series of numbers. My dear learners, did you know that in our real life, we always use and deal with sequence of patterns? I have here some examples of sequences is in numbers. First example, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Second example, 5, 10, 15. Last example, 1, 1, 2, 3, and 5. Sequences in letters. First example, A, B, C, A, B, C. Second example, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. We usually use the sequence of letters in arranging our names in alphabetical order and also in no naming tropical cyclones. Next is sequences in shapes. One box, two boxes, three boxes, four boxes, and five boxes. Sequence in figure. Shaded down, shaded up, shaded down, shaded up, shaded down. Another example or another examples of sequences and patterns are the creation of pyramid in Egypt, music composition, the multiplying number of infected people due to COVID, and the reproduction of beasts and other animals. Now, my dear learners, let us deepen our lesson and please stay with me as we go further. Here is our first word problem. My dear learners, let's read aloud the word problem together on your textbook. Turn your book on page 250 at the engaged part. Let's begin seven days before his mother's birthday. Clark planned to give her gifts. On the first day, one gift. On the second day, he sent three gifts. On the third day, he sent five gifts. And so on. How many gifts did Clark send to his mother on the seventh day? Consider the given problem. It can be represented in table form. The first row represents the number of days. And the second row represents the number of gifts that Clark sent each day. Upon observing the number of gifts, on the first day, he sent one gift. On the second day, he sent three gifts. On the third day, he sent five gifts, and so on. The question is, how many gifts did Clark send to his mother on the seventh day? Let us find it out by discovering first the appropriate rule in subtracting the terms. Let us start with the first and second terms in the sequence 3 minus 1 equals 2 5 minus 3 equals 2 
As you can see, the differences in between the terms are similar, which is 2. Now, let us try adding 2 in every term to check if what would be the final rule to be used in getting the succeeding terms in our sequence. 1 plus 2 equals 3. 3 plus 2 equals 5. We got it right. Therefore, the rule we will use is simply by adding 2 to 2 to the previous term to get the next term until you reach the seventh term. As the sequence continues, 5 plus 2 equals 7, 7 plus 2 equals 9, 9 plus 2 equals 11, 11 plus 2 equals 13. Finally, we got the number of dips on the on the seventh day based on our table his mother will receive 13 gifts on the seventh day therefore based on our solution we could formulate that the appropriate rule for our word problem is to add two to the previous term to get the next term Can you follow, my dear learners? I am hoping that everyone is doing great. Moving on to another set of sequence. Example number one. Find the next three terms of sequence two, five, eight. Again, like what we did in our word problem a while back, we will subtract the first term and the second term. In our sequence, the first term is 2, and the second term is 5. If we subtract 5 and 2, it will give us the difference of 3. And if we subtract 8 and 5, it will give us, again, the difference of 3. As you can see, the differences in between the terms are similar, which is 3. Now, let us try adding 3 in every term to check if what would be the final rule to be used in getting the succeeding terms in our sequence. 2 plus 3 equals 5. 5 plus 3 equals 8. Oh, we got it right again. The rule is add 3 or plus 3 on the previous term to get the next term. Now, my dear learners, join me in solving what are the next three terms by using this rule. 8 plus 3 equals 11. 11 plus 3 equals 14. 14 plus 3 equals 17. Therefore, the next three terms in our sequence are 11, 14, and 17. The correct answer for this sequence is 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, and 17 and the rule is add 3 to the previous term to get the next term did you get the same answer as mine very well said i am glad to know that you get it next we will answer example number two find the next terms of the sequence 3 6 12 24 blank 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 in example number one, we use the rule add 3 or plus 3 to get the next term. Now, let us look at this example. How are we going to solve for the next three terms for, from this sequence? Our first term is 3 and the second term is 6. Take note that there are two ways on how we get 6. It's either plus 3 or is equal to 6 or 3 times 2 is equal to 6 also which of the two ways are we going to use a 3 or times 2 we will find it out by applying them both to get the next term 6 plus 3 is equal to 9 6 multiplied by 2 equals 12 in our sequence 9 is not included while 12 is the term after 6. This means the rule that is applicable to our sequence is 
multiplying 2 to the previous term to get the next term. 12 multiplied by 2 is equal to 24. And in our sequence, 24 is the fourth term. Therefore, the rule is n times 2 is correct. Now, let us use the rule and then let's identify what are the next three terms by multiplying 2 with our last term in the sequence. 3 times 2 is equal to 6. 6 times 2 is equal to 12. 12 times 2 is equal to 24. 24 times 2 equals 48. 48 times 2 equals 96. 96 times 2 equals 192. Therefore, the next three terms of the sequence are 48, 96, and 192. The sequence is 3, 6, 12, 24, 48, 96, and 192. And the formulated rule in multiplying the term by 3 to the previous term is to get the next term. Okay, or to the previous term to get the next term. Example number 3. Find the next 3 of the sequence 1, 3, 7, 15. As we observe our given sequence, there is no fixed difference. But still, let us begin our solution by subtracting our first and second terms. 3 minus 1 equals 2, 7 minus 3 equals 4, 15 minus 7 equals 8. The differences in between the terms are 2, 4, and 8, which are closely related. If we multiply 2 by 2, the product is 4. 4 multiplied by 2 is equal to 8. Now, let us try to multiply 2 in each term in the sequence to check if n times 2 is appropriate rule to be used. 1 times 2 is equal to 2. And to make it 3, let us add 1, 2, 2. 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. 3 times 2 is equal to 6. And to make it 7, let us add 1. 6 plus 1 equals 7. 7 times 2 is equal to 14. And let's add 1 to get 15. 14 plus 1 is equal to 15. Based on our solution, the real or the rule is multiply 2 and add 1 in each term to get the succeeding terms. Now, let us find out what are the next three terms in our sequence by using this rule. Okay, 15 times 2 plus 1 is equal to 31. 31 times 2 plus 1 is equal to 63. 63 times 2 plus 1 is equal to 127. Therefore, the next three terms are 31, 63, and 100. Uh, 27. And the final answer for this sequence is 1, 3, 7, 15, 31, 63, and 127. By adding the rule or by using the rule, multiply the previous term by 2, then add 1 to the product to get the next term. Did you get it, my dear learners? Is that awesome? Okay, stay tuned for uh, for we still have more time to learn. Moving on to our example number four. Let us read the word problem all together. Sid loves to draw stars in the note in his notebook. He draws six stars on first page, ten stars on the second page, fourteen stars on the third page, and eighteen stars on the fourth page. If this pattern continues, how many stars will be drawn on the fifth of his notebook? In this case, we will make an illustration. On the first page, we have 6 stars. On the second page, 10 stars. Third page, 14 stars. Fourth page, 18 stars. Fifth page, we have to find it out. Let us try to subtract terms 
in the sequence like what we did in our examples a while back. 10 minus 6 is equal to 4. 14 minus 10 is equal to 4. 18 minus 14 is equal to 4. Based on our solution, there is a fixed difference between each terms. Therefore, the rule here is simply add 4 to the previous term to get the next term. Now, let us check if we got the correct rule. 6 plus 4 is equal to 10. 10 plus 4 is equal to 14. 14 plus 4 is equal to 18. 18 plus 4 is equal to 22. Therefore, on the fifth page, seed will draw 22 stars and the appropriate rule is N plus 4. Did you get it right? Wow, that's pretty amazing. Everyone is fast learner. Congratulations, grade 5 learners. I appreciate their participation for today's lesson. If there are less or, or if there are questions, feel free to ask on the comment section. Now let's have a recap. When we say quick sequence, it is the list of items that follow a certain pattern. It is also an ordered set of numbers, letters, shapes, or symbols. And when we say term, each number, letter, shape, or symbol in the sequence. Lastly, patterns. Patterns in the, is, in the mathematics can be geometric or numerical or numeral in nature. My dear learners, take note that in finding the next term in the sequence, it requires you to identify what is the pattern in order to formulate the correct rule. We have here some examples of rules, add 2 and add 4, and add 2 and add 1. As part of practice and assignment as well, answer the remaining rules on your quarter 3 math 5 learning activity sheet. Write your answer on your paper and submit it uh, to your teachers on the retrieval day. To our dear parents, please provide assistance to your children in accomplishing the additional activities found in Quarter 3, Math 5. Their guidance makes a big difference in how well your child can accomplish the task. Thank you and God bless. It's been a great morning serving you all, my dear Grade 5 learners. To all the learners who have their questions about our lesson, you may comment your questions in the comment box or ask uh, your math teachers to answer your question and please like and follow facebook page dep and tarlac province hashtag aral tarlac henyo i hope you learn a lot i'm teacher marife your mathematics 5 anchor teacher until next time goodbye Upang matugunan ang mga kinakaharap na pagsubok ng mga guro at mag-aaral sa gitna ng kasalukuyang pandemya, nagsanib tulong si na Congressman Charlie Cojuanco ng unang distrito ng Tarlac, DepEd Region 3 Regional Director Dr. May B. Eklar at Tarlac Schools Division Superintendent Dr. Ronaldo Poson para sa isang napapanahong proyekto na tinaguri ang Project Shine Aral Tarlacenyo. Ang mga mag-aaral ng grade 4 at grade 5, ganun din ang grades 8 and 9 sa buong probinsya ng Tarlac, kasalukuyang sumasa ilalim sa radio-based instruction. Katuwang ang himpilang DZTZ 828 kHz AM at RTB Tarlac, Channel 26. Ang Tarlac po nangunguna po ngayon pagdating po sa radio-based instruction. Marami pong humahanga sa atin. I'm very happy this station Itong DCTC could reach the whole of Region 3. Hindi natin alam. We are contributing. We are creating a very big bend in the history of Philippine education. And I am proud. I am here in Tarlac. This is the noble cause of education in which you and I, without you knowing it, we are bound to do. Project 
natin na Project Shine is a natural consequence dahil sa nangyari sa buong mundo. Let's continue to work together. I think it's very Filipino to practice uh, bayanihan in anything or most of the things that we do. And this is a manifestation of that. No? We have private sector, we have DepEd, we have local government, all working together. And I hope the parents of some of these children, especially the parents that did not graduate from school or hindi nakapag-aral nung sila ay bata, eh sana naman gamitin na nila itong opportunity na mag-schooling na rin sila kasama ng mga bat anak nila para mag-banding pati ang mga magulang sa mga bata. I look at this as doing God's work. Diba? So if you do God's work, it feels right. It's righteous. It's for good, not for evil. Good morning and uh, happy uh, learning uh, grade 4. Welcome to Adal Tarlac Henyo here on RTV Tarlac Channel 26. Simulcast over Dizzy Dizzy 828 Radio Pilipino Tarlac. I am Teacher Mercy Pacheco Bognot. This is Alistair Aidatu. I am Marie Josephine B. Andrade. I am Teacher Princess Marie M. Duenas. And I will be your teacher broadcaster for today. Multiply 1,089 by 9, you will get an answer, the exact reverse, which is 9,801. My name is J.R.P. Duldulao, your teacher broadcaster on Aral Tarlaqueño. For more math trivia and answers to your math questions, catch Aral Tarlaqueño every Monday to Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Learning math is so much fun! Magandang hapon sa mga masisipag na mag-aaral sa ikalimang baitang at sa mga ginigiliw naming mga magulang. Nagbabalik ang inyong paaralang panghimpapawid ng Araw Tarlac Henyo mula sa RTV Tarlac Channel 26 at sa bayang naririnig sa DZTZ 828 Radio Pilipino Tarlac. Napapanood din tayo sa FB Live ng RTV Tarlac Channel 26. Nagagalag kami na makasama kayong muli sa isa na namang makabuluhang talakayan na tiyag na maghahatid sa inyo ng kalaman. Ako si Binibining Karenes Ramos mula sa distrito ng Silangang Concepcion, ang inyong teacher broadcaster na makakasama ninyo sa araw na ito. Handa ka na ba? Mabuti kung ganon. Bago tayo magsimula sa ating talakayan, Kunin na muna ang inyong learner's module, activity sheet, ang inyong papel o kwaderno, at mga pansulat. Handa na ba kayo? Masaya akong marinig na handang-handa na kayo. Tanong ko lang, natatandaan pa ba ninyo ang ating pinag-aralan sa nakalipas na araw? Magaling! Masaya ako at naaalala niyo pa ang ating nakaraang aralin. Tara na at simulan na natin. Halika, magbalik aral tayo. Bilang panuto sa inyong gawain, basahin ang sumusunod na teksto. Kilalanin ang mga pangulo ng Pilipinas mula 1948. Mga naging pangulo ng Pilipinas mula taong 1948 ni Marites F. Agasa, Pundaket Elementary School. Taong 1948, ika-17 ng Abril, nang itinalaga si Elpidio Quirino bilang Pangulo ng Bansang Pilipinas. Sinundan siya ni Pangulong Ramon Magsaysay noong 
bumagsak ang eroplanong kanyang sinasakyan na naging sanhi ng kanyang kamatayan noong ika-17 ng Marso 1957. Agad na naupo ng sumunod na araw si Pangulong Carlos P. Garcia na tubong Bohol. Sa mga taong 1961 hanggang 1965 naman, naupo si Pangulong Diyosdado makapagal bilang ikasyam na Pangulo ng Bansa. Mula 1965 hanggang 1986, namuno ng bansa si Pangulong Ferdinand Marcos. Sa pamamagitan ng snap election ng February 7, 1986, sa tulong ng People's Power, tinalo ni Pangulong Corazon Aquino si Pangulong Ferdinand Marcos. Sinunda naman siya ni Pangulong Fidel V. Ramos noong taong 1992. Nakaroon ng pagkakataon ang artista si Joseph Erap Estrada na magbukulan noong 1998 hanggang 2001. Sumunod naman si Pangulong Gloria Macapagal Arroyo hanggang 2010 na sinundan naman ni Pangulong Benigno Aquino de Turk. Naging kasiyasiya ang pagkapangulo ni Rodrigo R. Duterte noong 2016, pambansang halalan. Para sa una, sino ang naging Pangulo ng Pilipinas noong 1953? Magaling! Ang tamang sagot ay si Pangulong Ramon Magsaysay. Sa ating ikalawang katanungan, sino ang naging Pangulo ng Pilipinas noong 1957? Magaling! Ang tamang sagot ay si Pangulo Carlos P. Garcia. Sino ang naging Pangulo ng Pilipinas noong 2010? Tama! Si Pangulo Binigno Aquino III. Para sa pang-apat na tanong, sino ang naging Pangulo ng Pilipinas noong taong 1948? Magaling! Si Pangulong Elpidio Quirino. At sa panghuling katanungan, sino ang naging Pangulo ng Pilipinas noong 1965? Mahusay! Ang tamang sagot ay si Pangulong Ferdinand Marcos. Napakagaling! Mukhang tandang-tanda pa ninyo ang ating mga napag-aralan sa nakalipas na aralin. Sa madaling salita, sa nakaraang aralin ay tinalakay natin ang tungkol sa paggawa ng isang timeline batay sa nabasang kasaysayan. Sa puntong ito ay sisimulan na natin ang talakayan. Sa araw na ito, pag-aaralan natin ang tungkol sa pagsasalaysay. Handa ka na ba? Ang pagsasalaysay ay isang uri ng pagpapahayag na may layuning magkwento ng mga pangyayari. Ito ay maaaring pasalita o pasulat. Ilang mga mahalagang katangian na dapat taglayin ng isang magandang salaysay ay ang pagkakaroon ng magandang pamagat kung ito ay pasulat. Dapat ding maging maayos, may magandang tono, may diin, at may buhay kung ito ay pasalita. Ano-ano ang mga dapat mong tandaan sa pagsasalaysay muli ng isang teksto? Una, maaari mong maisalaysay muli ang napakinggang teksto sa pamamagitan ng pasilita o pasulat ng mga pangungusap. Ikalawa, talasan mo ang inyong pandinig at ituon ang buong atensyon sa nagsasalita o sa pinakikinggan. At pangatlo, si kaping may balangkas o may buod ang tekstong napakinggan ayon sa pagkakasunod-sunod ng pangyayari. Mainam din na maalam ka sa kabuoang detalye ng iyong pinabasang kwento o teksto. Mahalagang malaman mo ang sagot sa mga tanong na ano, sino, Saan, kailan, at paano? Ang tanong na ano ay nangangailangan ng sagot ukol sa isang bagay, hayop, o kasangkapan. Ang tanong na sino ay ukol sa ngalan ng tao. Ang tanong na saan 
ay nauukol naman sa ngalan ng lugar. Ang tanong na kailan ay ukol sa panahon, araw, buwan o taon. Ang tanong na bakit ay ukol sa dahilan. At ang tanong na paano naman ay ukol sa paraan. Sa bahaging ito ay ating susubukin at palalawakin ang inyong galing. Makinig ng mabuti sa aking babasahing teksto na pinamagatang Minutong Pagsulyap sa Langit ni Marites F. Agasa ng Pundakit Elementary School. Minutong Pagsulyap sa Langit ni Marites F. Agasa, Pundakit Elementary School. Alay Tasha, pumasok ka. Nakahanda na ang inyong pwesto. Ikaw ang magiging tagapag-alaga at tagapagdilig sa mga halaman dito. Mayroon ka na lamang limang araw para manatili sa lupa kasama ang inyong pamilya. Nanay Gising, pinagpapawisan ka po. Umuungol po kayo. Pasigaw na sinasabi ni Lucky, apo ni Aling Tasha. Nakedlip ako apo, malungkot at umiiyak na niyakap ng mahigpit ni Aling Tasha si Lucky. Binuhat niya ang apo para paliguan at bihisan. Sinimulan na niyang maglinis ng buong kabahayan at magluto ng pananghalian. Nabuo ang kanyang unang araw na may saya. Kapansin-pansin ang pagbabago ni Aling Tasha. Tuwang-tuwa si Mang Ime sa inayos nitong mga halaman sa likod bahay sa kanyang ikalawang araw. Palihim niyang iniayos ang mga papeles na kanilang ari-arian sa isang plastic envelope sa kanilang taguan sa kanyang ikatlong araw. Ipinagbilin niya ang pag-aalaga sa kanyang apo na si Lucky na sa kanyang kapatid habang wala siya sa kanyang ikaapat na araw. At paghahanda ng maghapong pagkain para sa buong pamilya sa kanyang ikahuling araw. Lolo Emel, Lolo, si nanay, si nanay, umiiyak habang sumisigaw si Lucky. Biglang nagising si Aling Tasha sa likas ng sigaw ni Lucky. Apo, bakit? Nakaidlip lang si nanay sa sobrang pagod. Huwag ka nang umiyak, apo. Hindi pa mawawala si nanay. Nakangiting wika ni Aling Tasha sa halik at yakap ng mahigpit kay Lucky. Simula ng ating gawain. Para sa panuto, isulat ang detalye o impormasyong hinihingi gamit ang mga sumusunod na tanong batay sa napakinggang teksto. Isulat ang inyong sagot sa ating chat box. Simulan na natin ang ating gawain. Para sa unang katanungan, ano ang tinatnang pangyayari ni Lucky sa bahay ng kanyang lolo at lola? Isulat ang inyong sagot sa ating chat box. At kapag may oras pa, ating balikan upang bigyan po na ito. Sa ikalawang katanungan, bakit sumisigaw si Lucky nang makita niya ang kanyang lola Tasha na tulog na tulog sa sofa? Sa ating pangatlong katanungan, sino ang napagbigyan makusulyap ng isang minuto sa langit. Tama, sagot ni Casey, si Aling Tasha. Okay, sa ikaapat na katanungan, saan naglagbay ang diwa ni Lola Tasha habang nakaiglip siya ng isang minuto sa kanilang sofa? At sa panghuling katanungan, ayon sa kanyang nakausap sa langit, Ilang araw na lamang daw mamalagi sa lupa si Lola Tasha. Nasagot mo ba ng tama ang lahat ng mga tanong? Kung opo ang iyong sagot ay nangangahulugan lamang na may salaysay mo ng tama ang narinig mong kwento. Kaya naman, huwag natin sayangin ang pagkakataon na pamapalawag pa ang inyong kalaman sa pamamagitan ng isa pang gawain. Dito masusukat ang iyong pakikling sa pakikinig. 
sa ating susunod na teksto na pinamagatang urinary tract infection ni Marites F. Agasa, Teacher 3 ng Pundakit Elementary School. Handa ka na bang makinig? Mabuti kung ganon. Simulan na natin. Urinary tract infection ni Marites F. Agasa, Teacher 3 ng Pundakit Elementary School. Dinala sa Municipal Health Center si Chloe kagabi dahil sa mataas na lagnat. Tumitirik ang kanyang mga mata at nanginginig siya dahil sa napakataas na temperatura. Agad siyang nilapatan ng pangunahing lunas ng mga health officers. Mabilis ang pagkilos ng bawat isa kaya naman unti-unting humupa ang panginginig ng katawan at pagtirik ng mga mata niya. Kinuhanan agad siya ng dugo at pinaihi para masuri. Lumabas ang resulta kinabukasan at napag-alamang mayroon siyang urinary tract infection. Ayon sa urologist na si Dr. Juliano Panganiba ng Pinoy MD, ang urinary tract infection o UTI ay ang pagkakaroon ng infection sa urinary system o daluyan ng ihi. Kabilang dito ang bladder o pantog kung saan naiipon ang ihi at urethra kung saan naman ito dumadaan palabas ng katawan. Ngayon nga ay naroon ng mga maliliit na bato na namumuo sa kanyang kidney. Dahil dito, kailangan ni Chloe ng pitong araw na gamutan. Pinayuhan din siya na umiwas sa mga chichirya at soft drinks. Ganoon din ang mga pagkaing matataba. Masusing pagdabantay kay Chloe ang gagawin ng kanyang mga magulang upang matiyak ang kanyang mabilis na paggaling. Nakakasunod ba mga bata? Mabuti kung ganon. Ngayon, handa ka na ba para sa isa pa ang pagsasanay? Umpisahan na natin. Para sa panuto, pagsunod-sunodin ang mga pangyayari sa tekstong napakinggan. Lagyan ng bilang isa hanggang lima. Isulat ang sagot sa iyong sagutang papel. Una, agad siyang dinala sa Municipal Health Center. Ikalawa, tumirik ang mga mata at nanginig ang buong katawan ni Chloe kagabi dahil sa mataas na temperatura. Pangatlo, Mayroon siyang urinary tract infection at mga batong na mumuo sa kanyang kidney. Pang-apat, babantayan si Chloe ng kanyang mga magulang para masigurado ang kanyang mabilis na pagaling. At panghuli, ipinagbawal sa kanya ang chichirya at soft drinks. Tapos na ba kayong magsagot? Ang tamang sagot, 2... 1, 3, 5, at 4. Bilang paglalahat, laging tandaan na ang pagsasalisay ay isang uri ng pagpapahiyag na may layuning magkwento ng mga pangyayari. Ito ay maaaring pasalita o pasulat. Mahalagang malaman mo ang sagot sa mga tanong na ano, sino, saan, kailan, bakit, at paano? Bilang pagtataya, ihanda ang iyong sagutang papel. Mabi makinig ng mabuti sa babasahing teksto upang maibigay ng wasto ang mga detalyeng hinihingi. Simulan na natin. Lamparang disabog ni Marites F. Agasa, Pundakit Elementary School. Malakas na pagsabog ang narinig mula sa bahay ni na Benny ng hapong iyon. Kasunod nito ay ang malikas na iyak niya, mga basag na bote at lata at mga nasirang ilang mga gamit ang nagkalat sa buong kusina na naging sanhi ng maraming sugat sa kanyang katawan. Naputol ang kanyang dalawang daliri dahil sa pagsabog. Nagulat ang buong compound sa nangyari. Mag-isa lamang si Benny sa kanilang bahay at naisipan niyang sindihan ang isang boteng akala niya ay lampara. Ito pala ay dinamita na ginagamit ng kanyang tatay sa pangingisda. Dahil sa nangyari, mabilis na isinugot si Benny sa pinakamalapit na ospital 
at agad naman kinuha si Mang Bobot ng mga otoridad para sa investigasyon. Para sa ating susunod na gawain, isa-isahin ang mga mahalagang detalye na angkop sa bawat tanong tungkol sa binasang teksto para maayos na maisalaysay ang binasa gamit ang iyong sariling mga salita. Unang tanong, ano ang narinig mula sa bahay ni Benny isang hapon? Sa ating kalawang katanungan, sino ang nadatnan sa loob ng bahay nang mangyari ang pagsabog? Pangatlo, bakit may nangyaring pagsabog sa bahay ni na Benny? Pangapat, Saan ginagamit ang boting sinindihan ni Penny na akala niya ay lampara? At panglima, ano ang naging pinsala ng pagsabok sa kanyang katawan? Para sa huling katanungan, paano kaya pananagutan ni Tatay Bobot ang nangyari? Pag natapos mo na ang iyong gawain, Maaari mo na itong ipakita sa iyong guro sa Filipino 5 upang mabigyan ng puna ang iyong gawa. Binabati ko kayo mga bata! Labis akong nasiyahan na kayo ay nakasama sa araw na ito. Ngayon ay nais kong ilagay ninyo ang inyong kwaderno sa loob ng inyong envelope. Ilagay ito ng maayos at iwasang matupi o madumihan. Sana ay marami kayong natutunan sa, at sana ay nasiyahan kayo sa ating talakayan at mga gawain. Tandaan ang ating hashtag Abacada. Ako Bibo kasi dapat. Muli, ako si Karen S. Ramos, ang inyong teacher broadcaster sa Filipino. Hanggang sa muli mga bata, paalam! Kumusta mga video kong tagapakinig? Nagbabalik ang inyong 